Hi, Pat. My name is Herman Benitez. I represent Foxtrot TV. Okay. Uh, we cover the Houston Great. Dynamo, and thank you for the invite. I'll Thanks. see you Saturday night. Perfect. <laughs> Sunday night. Sunday night. Sunday night. Sunday night. Sunday. Yes, 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 yes. Against a good opponent, That's LAFC. Right. Let's talk about that game, actually. Good opportunity for the team, uh, like a litmus test, or see where we're at. Yeah, I think so these next two games are really a big test for us. I, even you could include uh, Minnesota the following week at home and, on Saturday. So uh, Salt Lake tonight uh, will be difficult. Very good team at home, uh, attacking team. Uh, although we think there's you know opportunities for us to be able to exploit them, mm -hmm. and then we'll see where LA is. It'll probably be a, a game of attrition. They play they play tomorrow night, uh, third game in eight days, nine days, and same for us. So we'll see what, see who's left standing come Sunday. Right. But uh, will be uh, these two games are really important. I think for us uh, and our guys, they tend to rise. We have a better record against the stronger teams in in the league than we do necessarily against the teams that are below us. But um, that's part of our character. Uh, sometimes you'd wish we were a little more consistent, consistent. but but it's a good group of guys. No, that's perfect. And let's talk about the reason why we're gathered here today. Yeah. Ezequiel Ponce, club transfer fee record. Yeah. I asked you for the, the transfer fee. You told me, hey, not, not that number, yeah. not but you touched on analytics. Yeah. Our fans are intrigued about okay. the partnership with the analytics. Give yeah. us an example of how that plays into a decision yeah, so like we this. Have, you know, we'll, we'll look at a, a position on the field. So, for example, if we said wide attacking midfielder is a great example because we use two different ones. You know, we use a Coco Carrasquilla profile that comes into the pocket and plays mm -hmm. in the pocket, and then we use an Ibrahim Aliou that stretches the line. So there's different, different qualities you want from that, from physical and from actual technical. So, uh, you know, from a physical standpoint, if you want the one that's running behind, you want speed, you want someone who can repeat that runs getting behind uh, doing that and if you want somebody maybe is a little more technical with the final pass that comes inside so you look at different uh, ways that we can measure that now in the game um, and uh, SRC is certainly probably a better person to answer this question mm -hmm. but they certainly have enough ways that they can measure that profile of player and so then we have to decide what's the player we need what profile we don't want to go out and get another Coco Karskia and expect him to run behind the line on a consistent basis uh, or another Ibrahim Aliou and to say, you've got to be a pocket technical player that plays the final pass. Well, that's not a strength. So for us, it's important to identify exactly what we need. So in Ezekiel Ponce's case, we identified exactly the profile we want as a forward. Uh, and then they came back to us with a list of, goodness, it was probably about 50 players. <laughs> uh, that's not my job to pare it down to about the last 10 or so. Uh, but our scouting department then does that. You know, does he fit in financially? Does he, you know, it's his character. Uh, what, do we, what do we hear about the clubs he's been to? Has he been successful? Does he have hit track history? Uh, and then we sit down and we kind of probably look at the last 10, 12 players and, and decide who's our top picks and present those then to Ben. And Ben takes a look and says, there's, there's our guy. And we all kind of, uh, all groups, the scouting, SRC, our, our head coach, our technical director, Ashley Madison, and myself, all five of us said, he's our guy. And uh, fortunately, we got him over the line. Okay, two questions on topics you just touched. One, I have to ask, given the opportunity to talk to you face to face, yeah. As of today, has there been a formal offer for Coco Carrasquilla made? A formal offer? Um, no, there's never been a formal offer. So we're, we're, you know, we're a lot of people are kind of kicking the tires. Right. I think uh, uh, asking, you know, what's the price? Uh, we have a price in mind that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so we keep we keep uh, moving forward and see where it goes. And the second question is, you touched on the word profile. What it was the profile y'all were looking for? That landed you on Ezequiel Ponce. Um, yeah, a, a, a hardworking forward that gets that can that can stretch the defense. Isn't, well, that's not the first thing we were looking for, but the biggest one was a history of being able to score with different different, not just his feet, but with his head, uh, being able to get on the end of things and having good movement in the box. Uh, I think was important for us, uh, and then and then for us the other one is to be able to repeat that, to be able to keep doing that for 90 minutes, uh, and to be a guy that could work really hard for 90 minutes on on both sides of the ball, uh, and I think we found that in Ezekiel. Okay, so you mentioned the department gives you the list. You and Asher went in person to see him, to yeah. scout him. What did you see on those trips? Uh, you know, we saw, saw kind of what we described, on, and uh, it usually matches up with what we, we've been told, you know. So we'd seen enough on film as well, so I think we knew what we were expecting. Um, but the one thing I think uh, that impressed us a little bit was uh, the way that uh, Mateus Almeida has his team playing was really competitive. It's one, a lot of one-on-one -on -one defending, a lot of one-on-one -on -one attacking. Uh, and he handled that very well, which I think for, as a forward, uh, especially when you're defending, that, that sort of work and, and certainly in the attacking standpoint, can you beat a guy for, for a minute, create your own shot? Um, I don't think that's necessarily Ezekiel's strength. Mm -hmm. He's not that type of forward, um, but he's certainly a, a forward in the mold of a guy that can get in, get in the box, uh, get, in, get in front of the defender, battle with defenders, uh, and he's a pretty strong boy, as you've seen. 
Right. And we mentioned his strengths. Do you see Ponce being able to play in a two-striker system? Possibly. Um, uh, he's done it in the past. Uh, right now, he wasn't. He wasn't doing that or re- recently at, at Athens. Um, it's possible. I mean, there's. I think we're pretty open. I think uh, Ben's been pretty flexible, and I mean, we've been pretty. I take that back. Last year, we've been pretty stagnant in terms of how we've been playing. Right. But it took us some time to get there. Um, but he has been a little flexible. You know, he played Sebastian Kowalczyk when Sebastian mm-hmm. Ferrer was injured. He came and said, "Okay, you know, we're going to play with a false nine. I think that best and overloaded the midfield. Mm-hmm. The question then is, how are we creating opportunities? So uh, that became a little bit more difficult. I think not having that that uh, focal point nine, but. Um, I'm sure Ben's pretty open to try to get his best 11 players that he thinks uh, on the field to try to win games. Perfect. And I wanted to ask you, I've heard your interview with Glenn Davis on Soccer Matters. Uh, we've spoken to Ben Olsen prior to, yet, to today's match. Correct. There's optimism that there's one player coming in in this window. Can you touch on where you're trying to improve yeah, no, the team? No, absolutely. We're, you know, we're still trying to bring, uh, I think, you know, uh, the profile we're really trying to find is either a one-on-one or a speedy wing or someone who can run behind. We really only have uh, um, Aliou Ibrahim is really our only guy that can stretch it. Mackenzie Gaines is Hurt. is here. Uh, unfortunately, he's just he got injured pretty pretty severe hamstring injury. Uh, he's pretty close to coming back, so that'll help. He'll get an opportunity, but uh, we're looking f- looking for that as a possibility. And then uh, uh, it depends other than that it's really probably just depth pieces but if we can get those uh, you know we wanted the four was a number one target if we can get some depth out wide and someone that can push and challenge for uh, Ibrahim and then our Aliou sorry I think at that stage uh, we'll be in good shape and during the press conference you mentioned three-year windows that's how you talk to Ted Siegel. Yeah, Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, it's more it's more like a three-year. So it's not really a window. It's just kind of always three years out. Here's what the spend will look like. Um, so if we pay a big fee, for example, we don't sit there and say, okay, it's let's just call it. Here's a, a ten million dollar fee. We're not saying, okay, that divide we divide that by three. So really, over the amortized fee is right. about three and a bit. But so we're not. Uh, uh, so much saying, okay, in these three years, and we'll wait till the three years are over, and then we'll have another three-year plan. We're still kind of rotating that year in, year out. But he needs to know what's the spend, where are we at, where do we rank around, around mm-hmm. the league, and we're pretty happy with that. Like we're in the top top uh, third of the league in terms of spend. Um, you know, right, probably right around the bottom of the top third, or so maybe maybe between nine and twelve or something like that. So uh, you know, that that's enough resources, I believe, uh, to go and try to try to win something. And that, that's exactly why I asked this question. Two, two points come to yeah. mind. How, how has the league changed where if you're not spending, you're, you're staying behind? Yeah, it's, uh, it's changed. I mean, I know when they first brought in DPs, I think right. it was almost like a badge of honor for, for Houston. As we came in, we didn't have DPs, and we won two championships, and I think we were like, ah, oh, there you go. You don't need DPs. But uh, what you've seen is that this league has changed now. Like those DPs are such difference makers. Uh, they, they really help those teams. And it's not necessarily about always maxing out your DPs, but making sure that you're maxing out the spend that you have. So uh, if you're not spending the resources you have available, your discretionary time, it becomes, becomes pretty difficult, I think, to compete in our league. Um, and we're fortunate with our owner. You know, he's, he's all in. He's all in on Houston, all in on the Dynamo. And uh, we're, we're lucky that we can uh, do that. And now we, it's up to us to make sure that we're competing year in, year out. And the reason I ask you that is because I want you to help us clarify to the fans because in this in this atmosphere you see teams signing. Oh, I wish the Dynamo would have gotten that yeah. player. Are there uh, transfers or players from the past that stop you from spending more this actual no, year? No, not really. Tim I Parker, mean, for example. Yeah, no, not really. I mean, we we've uh, you know we've had some successes, we've had some misses. I mean, that's the reality of recruitment. Unfortunately, if we can, well, but what we try to do is we try to minimize those risks now. I think now working with SRC and, and having a, a data scientist in our building, uh, Nathan Krieger, uh, being able to have uh, a full scouting department and getting that staffed up, I think we're in a much better place than we were when I first took over almost three years, a little less than three years ago. Um, so now I feel like we're in a much better place making the right decisions with the right players and, and understanding what the risk and reward is from these guys. So. Um, you know, I'm pretty happy with where we, were, where we are with our recruitment, but we can always get better. Mm-hmm. How did you sell Houston to Ezequiel Ponce? Uh, it, to be fair, it wasn't that, that difficult. I think he was excited. I think he was, uh, he was looking forward to a new challenge. I think he, 
He'd been, you know, he, he was at only at uh, AEK for one year this year, but he had been there before. Uh, I think he was looking for something, uh, as, as he mentioned, he's got a young family and I think some place where he felt really comfortable. Um, and, and certainly in our league, when you have someone you know, from Argentina or a Spanish speaker, this is a wonderful city to live in. You can really feel comfortable. Um, you, you know, you can, no matter where you go, you can feel like you're home and you can, you can find a piece of that. And I think that probably went a long way for him. And then my last question, you mentioned we're here to win championships. We're here to win trophies. trophies that was yeah. your message to the fans. Yeah. Is this team right now up to that challenge, or are we still missing one more piece? Uh, it's tough to say. We'll, we'll see. Time will tell. You know, I, I like our group, um, but there's a lot of good teams in our league right now, and you know, we're playing two of them over the next couple of days. So there's a lot of, a lot of good teams that we'll have to compete in, and beat. Um, but I like where our group is. I think we're... We're starting to round into form. You know, we haven't lost in, in six now. Uh, still, there's some, some things we have to iron out, I think, from just structurally from a, from a team. Uh, but in terms of individuals, this is, uh, as I mentioned, we'll probably get some depth out wide. But uh, other than that, this is our group for this year. Perfect. Pat, yeah. it's a pleasure, sir. All right. Hopefully the first of many. Thank yeah, you for thanks. the opportunity. Thanks. No, thanks for talking. <laughs> okay. You Preguntas para mí, Ezequiel Herman de Foxtrot TV. Eh, bienvenido a Houston nuevamente. <ríe> la pregunta que yo tengo para ti es, eh, ¿has hablado con Ben Olsen sobre el sistema antes de fichar aquí y, y cómo te parecía ese sistema para ti? Gracias. Sí, obviamente que la primera conversación que tuve con él fue bastante extensa. Eh, primero me, me fueron mostrando la ciudad, eh, todos lo, los beneficios que, que tiene estar, de estar aquí. Eh, pero luego pasamos a la, a la parte importante de cómo, de cómo vamos a funcionar como equipo y nada, una, una idea muy, muy linda de, 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 de competir eh, es, una, es una idea que te da opción de tener el balón casi siempre durante el partido la posición es muy importante pero también él quiere que, que hagamos daño en el área rival así que para, para eso nos estamos preparando y hablaste sobre la bienvenida que te dieron tus compañeros. Eh, has hablado con uno de ellos, Franco Escobar es de Nus, ¿no, no te has pu pu puesto en contacto con él? ¿O tiene un grupo de WhatsApp? ¿O ¿Cómo es ese ambiente? Sí, la, la, el ambiente es muy, es muy, muy lindo. Eh, es, es muy cómodo poder entrar, llegar a un club nuevo y que te reciban de esta forma. La verdad que no, no, no tiene precio. Eh, hacen que, que, la, que la adaptación sea un, un poco más rápida. Y nada, feliz de tenerle a los compañeros que, que tengo y, y nada, espero apro aprovecharlo lo máximo posible. Y hablar de la confianza que te mostró Pat y Asher mm -hmm. eh, y más con, con el dinero que están gastando, mm -hmm. eh, ¿estás listo para esa presión? Porque la afición va a esperar bastante de ti. Sí, obvio, obvio, obvio que, que lo tengo en cuenta, eh, todo lo que se está generando alrededor, ¿no? Pero... Ay, es esto lo, lo que amo, es esto lo que cada jugador quiere o debería necesitar sentir, ¿no? Eh, y, y la presión que venga desde afuera es lo que me, a mí me ayuda y me, me hace que cada día me levante y vaya a, a entrenarme de la mejor manera para que puedan ver a, a Ezequiel lo mejor posible el día del partido, ¿no? Y desde mi parte voy a, voy a dar lo mejor para, para llegar a esas expectativas y más que nada las expectativas grupales que tenemos que, que son muy, muy grandes y poder aportar mi grano de arena para, para construir todo esto. ¿Cuáles son esas expectativas grupales? ¿Qué fue lo que te vendió Pat y Asher? No, eh, la ambición que tenemos, la ambición que tenemos como club, de cómo se están organizando las cosas. Eh, nosotros vamos a, eh, competimos eh, en, cada, en cada torneo que competimos, lo, lo vamos a querer ganar. Y, y nada, para eso nos entrenamos y nos trabajamos cada día, ¿no? Eh, lo, que, lo que hablamos con Pat, Asher y Ben es, es esto, eh, ser competitivos y, y llegar lo más alto en cada torneo que juguemos y después, bueno, en lo individual me dan la, la libertad de, de, de poder moverme en el frente de ataque e y, y, y intentar ser lo más peligroso posible en el área rival. Y para aquel aficionado que no te conoce, no te ha visto en Europa, ¿cómo te describieras tú como delantero? Como decía antes, eh, yo tengo amor por, por este deporte, por el fútbol, eh, soy un compañero de, de equipo y nada, junto a mis compañeros voy a intentar a, a ayudar eh, 
tratando de moverme por, por todo, toda el área, por dando opciones de, de pase y querer siempre atacar el arco rival. ¿no? Eh, obviamente me voy a, me voy a nutrir de, del buen pie que tiene este equipo y, y, en los últimos, y en los últimos metros ser lo más peligroso posible. ¿Y tenés preferencia de jugar con un compañero delantero o vos solo al frente? No, no, no tengo, no tengo preferencia. Siempre es bueno tener compañía y que la voy a tener, ¿no? Porque es, hay mucha movilidad dentro, de, dentro del equipo. Así que, nada, eh, me, voy a, me voy, a, voy a estar muy contento de tenerlos y disfrutar de, dentro del campo de juego de, de, lo, de los compañeros. Bueno, Ezequiel, muchas gracias. Bienvenido nuevamente y ansioso por verlo el 20 de julio. Gracias.